First tonight, summers are quiet at the State House in Augusta. The legislature has finished its work and adjourned for the year. So this seemed like a good time to talk with Governor Janet Mills, who has been on the job now for seven months. We sat down with her at the Blaine House to talk policy and politics. The presidential election is 15 months away, something like that. There's a lot of Democratic candidates running for president. I'm sure that they've been in touch with you. Are you being vigorously courted by all those candidates because of your position? Not really. I mean, I know several of them. I know um, John Hickenlooper. I know Steve Bullock. I know Elizabeth Warren. I know Kamala Harris. I mean, we've served together as AGs, Bullock and Harris, for instance. And I've talked with some of them, but no, not aggressively being courted. In fact, I tried to stay up and watch the debates. I fell asleep. So, um, yeah, I have not picked a candidate yet. There's clearly a debate, a vigorous debate that's going on between the more moderate candidates in the Democratic field mm -hmm. and the more liberal candidates. How do you feel when you see some of the leading candidates in the Democratic field calling for the abolition of immigration and customs enforcement, calling for Medicare for all, calling for health care for undocumented immigrants. Are you comfortable with those kinds of positions? I'm not really comfortable with extreme positions in any of those areas, but uh, you know, I think some of those issues are idealistic. Medicare for all, for instance. Uh, obviously, if we brought down the age eligibility for Medicare, more people would be covered. Medicare for all, probably not realistic in the near future. If the Democratic nominee ends up being a Bernie Sanders or an Elizabeth Warren, hardcore liberal candidates, do you think the Democratic Party is in good shape or do you think the Democratic Party will be in trouble in 2020 come the presidential election? I, I think that's kind of speculative, honestly. I can't predict what issues will come about next year and a lot, de a lot depends on how they respond to different situations and different issues. There's an awful lot of flag waving on both sides. There's an awful lot of uh, uh, posturing, frankly, and speech making. I want to see substance. I want to see what somebody has actually done, not simply what they're talking about doing. Let's talk about some main issues. Your first budget increased state spending by about 10 percent. Let's say that the main economy grows by 3 percent. Let's say wages grow by 2 to 3 percent. That means state spending is increasing far faster than the money going into Mainers wallets. Do you think that Mainers are getting a good return on all of that extra money that is being spent under the Mills administration? Absolutely. Take Medicaid expansion. In one year alone recently, the hospitals across Maine, especially the rural hospitals, uh, had to take on about $660 million in uncompensated care. That's a huge economic burden on those communities, on those institutions. And that cost obviously was shifted onto small businesses and insurance companies and insurance premiums for self-employed and small businesses and larger businesses. So shifting that cost was a big factor in our economy. I am hopeful and we're looking at how uh, funding Medicaid expansion will reduce that shift in cost onto businesses and onto self-employed people. So it, redu it reduces what people have to pay it reduces their cost of living, ultimately. The news came out just uh, in recent days that only about half of the bills from your inauguration have been paid for by your campaign. It's the kind of thing that gets people <laughs> riled up, because they say there's, there are two standards. There's a standard for the politicians, and there's the standard for the regular folks. So if the regular folks rented out the Augusta Civic Center, and then seven months later hadn't paid the bill, that there would be a real problem. Actually, I think we're almost, I think that bill is just about paid. Well, why did it take so long? Well, for one thing, we had to report, this is the first time in history that we've had to disclose and report on uh, all the expenses of the inaugural and the transition committee, transition team. Uh, there's no public money, virtually no public money, maybe $5,000 for the transition. Uh, so all that time we were trying to raise money and we're being, we're being fairly selective about who we raise money from. Mo of most the of the money comes from lobbyists and they don't do it out of the goodness of their hearts. They do it because they want to have influence would in you, state government. Would you go ask the previous governors how much they spent on their inaugurals? Because they weren't required to disclose and none of them did disclose. It's probably the same people, maybe different ones, uh, uh, pay, you know, supported those inaugurals as supported mine. But 
honestly, and there was a debate between us and the uh, Augusta Civic Center about how much was due as well. And I got to say that uh, the bill was a lot higher than we expected. Governor LePage, former Governor LePage, as you know, has said that he's thinking about running for governor again against whoever the candidate would be. Is he a main resident? He is not. Oh, there you go. What do you, what runs through your head when you hear him say that he might come back and run? I don't think about him very often at all. I really don't. The first part of our conversation with Governor Mills aired yesterday. We talked about the personal aspect of being governor, how she spends her days, what she likes and doesn't like about the job, those kinds of things. If you missed that part of the conversation, you can actually find it in the 207 section of our website, newscentermain.com or our mobile app.